Now we're going to take a look at the Arduino, which is the brain of the CANSAT. At its heart, there's a microcontroller chip in here, and along the edges are sockets which allow the Arduino to interface to the real world. Um, they allow the Arduino to take in information from the real world and to send out information and controlling signals. On one side, we have the digital input output pins. They're labeled 0 to 13. The first two are also labeled receive and transmit RX and TX. On this side, we have the analog input output pins labeled A0 to A5. On the, two en on the end here, we have one socket that connects via a USB cable to the, your computer, and here we have a connector for the power socket, where we can connect a battery to power the Arduino when it's not connected to the computer. An Arduino contains a microchip, which is a very small computer that you can program. You can attach sensors to it that can measure conditions, like how much light there is in the room. It can control how other objects react to those conditions. The room gets dark, the LED turns on. Or it can respond to something as simple as the press of a switch. Microcontrollers use inputs and outputs like any computer. Inputs capture information from the user or the environment, while outputs do something with that information that has been captured. OK, now we're going to build a circuit using the Arduino and we're going to write a program so that the Arduino flashes a LED or a small light. We're going to use breadboard to build a circuit. A breadboard is a rectangular plastic box filled with holes which have contacts in which you can insert electronic components and wires. A breadboard is used to build a temporary version of your circuit. You don't have to solder anything. Instead, you insert components and wires into the little contact holes arranged in rows and connected underneath the plastic by metal. You can then connect your components together with wires to form your circuit. In this first circuit, we're going to connect a LED and a resistor to the Arduino. So we're going to connect the LED to digital pin 2. So I'm going to connect a wire in here and I'm going to bring this wire to any row of the breadboard. Then I'm going to take the LED, I'm going to take the longer leg, which is the anode, and connect it into the same row as the wire so the current can flow from the wire underneath the metal track and into the lead. Then I'm going to connect the other leg of the lead to a different row, like that. I'm going to take my 330 ohm resistor, connect one leg of that resistor to the same row as this, this leg or the cathode of the lead. See if I can get that connected in properly. And the other leg of the resistor goes to another row. Again, any row, doesn't matter. And lastly, we need to connect that side of that resistor back to a ground pin on the Arduino. And you have a choice of ground pins. You can use one on this side or this side. So I'll just go in here where it's handy. Now, to get the lead to turn on, we'll need the Arduino to send out a 5 volt or a logic high signal on this wire. So we'll need it to send a 5 volts onto digital pin 2. That will allow current to flow through the wire, through the lead, through the resistor, and back to ground. To get the Arduino to turn off the lead, we'll need to tell it to put a digital low or zero volts out on pin 2. And in that case, there'll be no current flowing through the circuit, so the lead will remain off. The next step is to program the Arduino to make it turn the LED on and off. To do that, we use the Arduino IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. This software can be downloaded free from the web. Once it's open here, I'm going to go to full screen, and I'll just start to key in the program right away. When you've keyed in a few lines, it's a good idea to give your program a name and save it. So I'm going to go to File, Save, and we'll call it maybe a LED blink. Just hit save here. And now I'll resume typing and finish entering the program. Now um, I'm going to open the program that I completed and saved earlier. Um, it's here. Uh, it's LED blink. Okay, so here's the complete program. So this is the complete program. And let me just run through it with you to show you how it works. The first opening line is void setup. 
this top section is used to set up things before you actually run the, the main part of the program. And what we've done here is we've said pin mode to output. So that means pin 2 on the Arduino is going to be used for output. It's going to be used to send signals out to the real world because that's where we have the lead connected. The next section has a heading void loop. This part of the program gets executed over and over again. First line here, digital write too high. The Arduino will take a logic high or 5 volts and send it out on pin 2, so turning on our lead. The next line is delay 500, that means pause or do nothing for 500 milliseconds. So the light will stay on for half a second. Next line is another digital write to the same pin, but this time it's low, meaning a logic low or 0 volts. So the effect here is to turn off the lead. Next line is another delay, so there is a half a second while the lead is off. Then the processor will go back up and repeat the code again. So it will send a high out again on pin 2, delay, low, delay, and the effect will be to have the lead flash on off, on off, on off. So now I'm going to verify the program, and this will find if there are any typing or syntax errors. So down here in orange, I can see there's been a problem. So it's telling me it expected a semicolon before the curly bracket. And I look here, and sure enough, I've left out a semicolon. There should be one at the end of every line. So now I will try to verify again. Now I can see at the bottom of the screen, it's doing compiling sketch and done compiling. No orange writing, so all is good. Now that the program has successfully compiled, we're ready to upload it to the Arduino. So I'm going to connect up the, our little Arduino board and circuit using the download cable to one of the USB ports on my laptop here. And so I'll just go here. We click on the upload icon here and the program should effectively go down the cable and into the Arduino. The, down at the bottom of the screen it says done uploading, no orange writing here, so it all looks good. So now if we switch and have a look at our Arduino, we see our program running. Our light is flashing on, off, on, off. Now once the program is loaded into the Arduino, the Arduino is really only using this cable for power. So I can disconnect the Arduino from the computer. There's now no power on it, but the program will stay stored in the, on the board. What I can do though is connect up a battery. So if I connect up a little battery here, a 9 volt battery, and I insert the cables here in ground, black one, and V in with the red one, then you can see that your program is now running on the Arduino independently of the computer and flashing the LED. If you have problems uploading, uh, one thing you might have a look at are the serial ports. So come out to the control panel of your computer, go to hardware and sound. Okay, so we select device manager, then you scan along and click on ports. Under that heading you should see what port the Arduino is connected to. In our case it's COM14. So I can then go back to the Arduino and ensure that it's connected to the right one. So under tools, serial port, and we're connected correctly. But sometimes there may be a selection of ports here and you make sure you've checked the right box. That should solve any uh, communications problems.